The miniaturization of optical systems across the electromagnetic spectrum poses a significant challenge. Despite advancements in metamaterials allowing for thinner optical elements, the voids between these elements dominate the volume in an optical system. A novel concept, the space plate, has been proposed to replace regions of free space with thinner optical elements that mimic the free space optical response function. This concept could drastically reduce the volume of optical systems. However, space plates have yet to be deployed in real-world optical systems. In this study, researchers utilized a custom-designed space plate to reduce the length of a gradient index, GRIN, lens microwave antenna. The antenna was designed to operate at 23.5 GHz, and the incorporation of a non-local metamaterial space plate enabled the distance between the antenna feed and the GRIN lens to be reduced by nearly a factor of two. The radiation patterns from a conventional and space-squeezed antenna were found to be very similar, with low cross-polarization and only a minor increase in sidelobe levels when introducing the space plate. This paper highlights the potential for space plates to reduce the physical size of optical systems in real-world applications. It presents a first example of a space plate integrated into a functional optical system, demonstrating the feasibility of this concept in practical scenarios. The research contributes to the ongoing efforts in the emerging field of non-local metamaterials, which aim to create optical systems that act on individual Fourier components of an incident field rather than on field components at specific positions. Space plates are optical components that can effectively shrink the thickness of optical systems without modifying the properties of propagating beams or the focusing power of elements in the original system. The compression factor C defined as the thickness of free space the space plate mimics to the thickness of the space plate itself, is a fundamental metric of space plates. However, there are fundamental bounds that tie the compression factor to numerical aperture and frequency bandwidth, and practical limits are imposed by the required numerical aperture, frequency bandwidth, and physical limits on the lateral size of the elements. In this study, the first experimental demonstration of a non-local space plate contracting the size of a real-world optical system, specifically a microwave gradient index lens antenna, is presented. The space plate is formed by three suitably coupled Fabripero cavities employing partially reflecting metasurfaces, with a thickness of 17.1 mm that acts as 120 mm of free space, giving a compression factor of approximately 7. The space plate is inserted between the lens and the feed antenna, bringing the focus closer to the lens while keeping the focal length of the system unchanged. The microwave gradient index lens antenna, designed to demonstrate the space squeezing capability of the space plate, consists of a dielectric grin lens and a rectangular, linearly polarized, horn antenna source. The horn has an aperture dimension of 52 mm and 38 mm producing a pencil beam radiation pattern with a measured 3 decibels beam width of 8.5 degrees and 8.2 degrees in E and H planes, respectively, with a measured directivity of 26.1 dBi and 23.5 GHz. The Grin lens is designed with a focal length of 200 mm, with a diameter of 100 mm and a thickness of 20 mm, and its edges are illuminated at 17.1 decibels and 14.8 decibels below the axial illumination level in the E and H planes, respectively. The numerical aperture of the lens is approximately 0.24. The lens is fabricated from high-impact polystyrene using a 3D printer, with a characterized relative permittivity value of 2.45 and a dielectric loss tangent of 1.1 times 10 carat. 3 at 23 GHz. The gradient index profile is discretized into eight concentric rings, each with its own relative permittivity value, which decreases from the center to the outermost ring. The effective permittivity is controlled by varying the volume percentage of air to plastic for each ring, achieved through the infill percentage parameter in the 3D printer's slicing software. The paper presents the principal and experimental setup of a microwave space plate a novel device designed to manipulate the phase of electromagnetic waves. The setup includes a grin lens illuminated by a horn antenna, with the phase center located at the focus of the lens. However, when a space plate is introduced, the focus distance differs from the focal length of the grin lens. The space plate consists of three space-squeezing cavities, C1, C3, C5, and two D-electric-filled cavities, C2, C4, 
each formed between two metallic mirrors. These cavities are partially filled with air and partially with a dielectric substrate, resulting in electrical thicknesses of approximately lambda, 2. The metallic mirrors are fabricated using a standard printed circuit board process and consist of square holes with specific dimensions, leading to a transmission of 0.19 and reflection of 0.81 at 23.5 GHz. A single Fabripero cavity, the building block for the multi-cavity design, is formed by two such mirrors and has a compression factor of C equals 6.9, compared to the theoretical value of C equals 7.45. The assembled space plate consists of three single cavity FP resonators stacked back to back, with each resonant cavity formed in the region between two successive metallic mirrors. The reflection phase of the meshes, along with the electrical and actual thickness of the cavities, is less than lambda, too. The coupling cavities C2 and C4 are filled by the dielectric substrate, with dimensions not further optimized for convenience in the assembly process. The thicknesses of the air gaps are also not optimized. The paper outlines the design and performance of the space plate, including its potential applications in microwave engineering. A three cavity space plate, comprising stacked Fabripero resonators, is designed to enhance the effective distance, DEF, by leveraging intercavity coupling. Simulations reveal that this configuration yields a higher compression factor, C, compared to a single isolated Fabripero space plate resulting in a threefold increase of DEF. Dispersion plots for the transverse electric, T, and transverse magnetic, TM, polarization states are presented, showcasing the amplitude and phase of the transmission coefficient as functions of frequency and angle. These plots illustrate the approximately parabolic shift of the resonance with angle. Onidimensional angular cuts at four frequency points demonstrate significant loss in transmission at normal incidence when operating away from the resonance, 23.65 GHz, while the phase follows the phase of free space even at this frequency. The simulated compression factor, C, as a function of frequency is plotted, with the four frequency points highlighted. To validate the properties of the isolated space plate, Amplitude and phase of its transmission coefficient, S21, at normal incidence were measured in a twilens 4F quasi-optical setup. This setup consists of two identical standard gain horn antennas and two identical lenses, 3D printed from hips, with a focal length of 130 mm and a radius of curvature of 75 mm. The space plate was introduced midway between the lenses, and transmission coefficient measurements were taken with and without the space plate. The authors present a quasi-optical calibration method to measure the transmission coefficient of a space plate, a crucial component in the design of a space-compressed grin antenna. By normalizing the measured complex transmission coefficient with the space plate sample to a reference transmission coefficient without the sample, the calibrated transmission coefficient is obtained. The measured amplitude and unwrapped phase of the transmission coefficient are shown in figures 3, D, and 3, E respectively, and compared to simulation data. The authors note that the presented measured results are approximate due to a systematic error introduced by the space plate. The space plate is incorporated into the antenna design by compressing individual mirrors together using threaded PTFE bolts and setting the distances between the sheets using PTFE spacers. The space plate is then introduced midway between the horn source antenna and the grin lens reducing the distance between the horn and the lens center from 150 mm to 67 mm. The new focal distance is calculated to be 117 mm. The performance of the space-compressed grin antenna is evaluated by measuring its far-field radiation patterns and comparing them to those obtained for the nominal lens antenna without the space plate. The experimental setup is shown in Figure 4 where the antenna under test is mounted on a rotation stage, and a stationary standard gain probe antenna is placed at a distance of 1.832.03 meters away. The near field of the antenna is mapped on a sphere by measuring the transmission coefficient between the antennas as a function of angles theta and phi. The copolarization radiation patterns of the three configurations, horn, horn plus grin lens, or horn plus space plate plus grin lens, are compared in figure 5 at 23.5 GHz for the two orthogonal planes phi equals 0 degrees and phi equals 90 degrees. 
The results show that the grin lens increases the directivity of the source horn, reducing beam width, and the introduction of the space plate preserves the shape of the main beam of the lens antenna despite the reduced separation between the source horn and grin lens. The authors observe a gradual increase in the radiation levels outside of the main beam from the source antenna alone, to the grin lens, and finally to the space plate squeezed grin lens antenna. The experimental results of the antenna system are presented in Figure 5, showcasing the copolarized component of the radiated field as a function of rotation angle in the E and H planes for three configurations, horn alone, horn with grin lens, and horn with space plate in grin lens. In the E plane, adding the space plate significantly reduces radiation levels at angles plus or minus 153 degrees which are reflections of the side lobes of the source horn antenna located at plus or minus 27 degrees. In the H-plane, these lobes are less pronounced due to lower radiation levels from the source antenna. The space plate influences cross-polarization levels, with a subtle depolarization observed, although the overall cross-polarization level at the bore site remains close to 30 decibels. Directivity, efficiency, and reflection coefficient at the input port of the horn antenna are compared as functions of frequency. The efficiency of the antenna under test, AUT, is calculated using the direct comparison method, considering the gain profile of the probe and cable losses. The reflection coefficient indicates that the space plate is well impedance matched to the rest of the elements in the frequency range of interest, 22.7 to 23.6 GHz, ruling out back reflection from the space plate is the cause of efficiency reduction. The results highlight the significance of considering the influence of a space plate on an electromagnetic source, such as a feed horn antenna, when placed in close proximity. This interaction alters the radiation pattern of the antenna, making the source antenna and the space plate a single electromagnetic component. In this experiment, the axial distance from the horn edge to the space plate is 25 mm, corresponding to electrical distances of lambda, 4 and lambda, 2 at the lower and upper ends of the frequency band, respectively. This proximity leads to capacitive and or inductive coupling, affecting the antenna's radiation pattern, and the space plate and source antenna become inseparable in their function, resulting in changes to the antenna's radiation characteristics. A novel approach to reducing the size of microwave optics systems has been presented, focusing on the use of space plates for compressing free space in a grin lens antenna. By integrating a space plate, the length between the lens and its focus is reduced by nearly a factor of two, while the focal length of the optics remains unchanged. This design leverages space compression metamaterials to miniaturize the system contributing to ongoing efforts in developing compact optical devices operating in the microwave region. The radiation patterns of the compressed system exhibit similarities to those of the uncompressed antenna, including low cross-polarization, comparable directivity, and a minor increase in side lobe levels. However, dielectric losses in the substrates of the cavity mirrors result in a 35% reduction in system efficiency. This limitation may be addressed through the use of low-loss dielectrics or fully metallic metasurfaces in future designs. The study also explores other research on folded transmitter array antennas, which have been hybridized with folded reflect arrays to achieve dual-band operation and independent beam control. These designs, leveraging the concept of space compression, may benefit from the integration of space plates to further miniaturize their size without compromising performance. The symmetry of the proposed structure enables polarization agnostic operation, making it suitable for use with linearly, circularly, or generally polarized radiation. Recent advancements in flat optics have led to the development of space plates as a promising alternative to traditional bulky optical components. Building upon pioneering work by Rishef et al., who introduced the concept of space plates, subsequent studies by Shastri and Montecone, and Miller have explored the potential and limitations of non-local flat optics. The performance limits and implementation of space plates at microwave frequencies have been investigated by Mernke et al., demonstrating their feasibility for optical aberration correction, as shown by Shao et al. The bandwidth limits of space plates have been explored by Shastri et al., and the potential for dual-band space plates has been proposed by Mernke et al. Furthermore, research by Paul Evaninazad and Montecone has suggested the possibility of multicolor spaceplates in the visible spectrum. 
In addition to these theoretical and experimental breakthroughs, design and fabrication of 3D printed planar graded index lenses have been developed for millimeter wave applications. Shu et al.'s multi-objective optimization of bespoke gradient index lenses has also been explored, offering a potential solution to overcome the limitations of transformation optics. Moreover, the use of dielectric non-local metasurfaces for fully solid-state ultra-thin optical systems has been proposed by Chen and Montecone. These advancements collectively contribute to a paradigm shift in optics enabling the development of compact, multifunctional, and high-performance optical systems. The exploration of space plates and non-local flat optics has opened up new avenues for innovation, with potential applications in various fields, including imaging, sensing, and communication systems. The supplementary document provides additional details on the design, simulations, and measurements of the space plate-based GRIN antenna. Figure S1 illustrates the experimental setup for material characterization, which measures the space plate's dispersion at normal incidence. The results are presented in Figure 3, D, and E of the main paper, with a detailed description of the setup found in Section 2 of the main paper. The Grin lens design and fabrication consist of eight regions with varying effective permittivity. Table S1 presents the volumetric filling fractions and calculated relative permittivities of the individual regions, while figure S2 provides a photograph of the Grin lens. The spaceplate analysis and design involve a composition of six partially reflecting mirrors, which can be decomposed into three individual Fabry Perot FP, cavities. Figure S3, A, shows the unit cell of the whole array structure deposited on a microwave substrate. The reflectance of the sheet as a function of frequency for normal incidence and 30-degree incident angle is presented in figure S3, B. The small difference in TE and TM polarization is attributed to the Fresnel reflection coefficient associated with the interface. By stacking two partial mirrors, a single FP cavity is formed, with the unit cell shown in figure S4, A. The magnitude and phase of the simulated transmission coefficient are presented in figure S4, B and c as functions of incident angle and frequency simulated using the finite element solver ansys hfss the effective thickness of free space that the space plate replaces is evaluated by fitting a free space dispersion expression arg express ik defco's theta to the simulated phase dispersion this fitting is undertaken for each frequency over the range of interest providing a detailed understanding of the space plate's properties the supplementary figure S2 presents a photograph of the Grin lens, a key component in the spaceplate design. The operational range of the spaceplate is characterized by its numerical aperture, Na, defined as the sign of the maximum incident angle, theta max, accepted by the spaceplate. In this case, theta max is set to 20 degrees, slightly higher than the maximum angle corresponding to the marginal ray connecting the center of the horn's aperture and the rim of the lens which is approximately 18.4 degrees. This design choice is made to enhance transmission modulation across the numerical aperture. The fitting result yields the effective distance, DEF, and by knowing the thickness of the space plate, DSP, the compression factor, C, can be evaluated as the ratio of DEF to DSP. For a single cavity space plate, as shown in figure S4, A, the thickness DSP is 5.7 millimeters. The compression factor as a function of frequency is presented in figure S5, A, and B, for TE and TM polarization states, respectively. Figure S3 illustrates the simulated properties of individual mirrors. The unit cell of the mirror is depicted in figure S3, A, and the reflectance as a function of frequency is shown in figure S3, B. This simulation provides insight into the behavior of the mirrors which is essential for understanding the overall performance of the space plate. The simulated properties of a single Fabripero cavity are presented, comprising a unit cell schematic and dispersion plots for both TE and TM polarization states. The dispersion plots illustrate the magnitude and phase of the simulated transmission coefficient, providing a comprehensive understanding of the cavity's optical properties. The calculated compression factor of a single Fabripero cavity space plate is also presented, separately calculated for TE and TM polarization states. 
This compression factor is a crucial parameter in evaluating the cavity's ability to manipulate optical signals. By examining the simulated properties, valuable insights into the cavity's optical behavior and potential applications are gained. The results are essential in understanding the cavity's performance and its suitability for various optical devices, consistent with previous discussions on the design and optimization of Fabripero cavities. These findings demonstrate the ability to accurately simulate and analyze the properties of a single Fabripero cavity, laying the groundwork for further research and development. Future work may involve experimental verification of the simulated results and further optimization of the cavity's design to achieve improved performance.